I think it's fair to say that we all enjoy experimenting with Photoshop filters from time to time. But there are many other filters available made by other software creators. Now, these are generally referred to as third-party plugins. Some of them are freestanding, while others can be either freestanding or they can work within Photoshop, Lightroom or Elements. Now it's very easy to find third-party filters online, but none of us can be expert on all of them, there's just too many of them. Now one that I've become a fan of recently is Topaz Impression Filters. I've been using them on images for an audio-visual sequence, but they're not restricted to just audio-visual of course. Filters are all about the final presentation of our images, and audio-visual is probably the ultimate presentation method. So here we could have a match made in heaven. The problem with third-party filters is the cost of them, and knowing if we're going to get good use from them. None of us has the time to be an expert in all of these options. But what we can do here is to demonstrate filters like Topaz Impression, to give you a feel of what they do and what they offer. Now I'm beginning the process here with a HD resolution image, which is 1920 pixels on the long side and 1080 pixels in height. Now I've done that for two reasons. That's the size of the images I want for my slideshow, but I also find that I get a better result from nearly all the filters that I use when I reduce the resolution of the image first. When you think about it, when we do decide to add a filter effect, we are making a conscious decision to move away from photo quality, and in those circumstances, higher resolution can actually be a little bit of a hindrance. We just don't seem to need all of those pixels, unless, of course, we really are planning to have a huge print printed maybe a large canvas or something along those lines. Some third-party filters that we apply to our software gives us the opportunity when we place the filter on the image to do that on a copy. So when we open the image back up into Photoshop we've got two versions of the image. We've got the original unfiltered version and also the filtered version and that has quite a few advantages. Now if your third-party filters don't allow that, then one option open to you is to go to your Layers palette, I'll open mine up permanently here, and make a copy of your background thumbnail. Control J will do that, so we can now work on just this layer, which is going to have the filter effect that I choose applied to it. So let's make a start by going to our Filters menu. We can see all of the filters that come with Photoshop just in that location there, but any third-party filters will appear below, and of course the one I'm interested in showing you here is Topaz Labs and Topaz Impression. So I'll launch it and give it an opportunity to appear on screen and draw all the thumbnails down the right-hand side. Now those thumbnails on the right is how we can select and the filter will be changed almost instantly to give us an idea of what the filter effect is going to do to the image. And you can see as I go down here, it is quite a quick process. There's a scroll bar on the right which indicates there is quite a few others there too. Now we can think of these as our presets, in other words they are our jumping off point, nothing to stop us from using this straight out of the box so to speak but we do have some options here, which I'll come back to in a few moments. But let's take a look at what the filters offer by going up to the tab at the top right, where we can see the word Featured. When I click that, you can see a drop-down menu. We get Featured, we get All Effects, but we also get all of our presets in categories. Ancient, Impressionistic, modern painting, pencil, pictorial, charcoal and pastel, and we've also got the opportunity to create something unique ourselves and save it into our own presets. 
let's just take a look perhaps at the impressionistic filters and you can see the thumbnails just redrawing themselves and I can click at the top and take a quick scroll down to take a look at the effects that I'm being offered. Now to give you an opportunity to see how this is done let me just go down one or two more that looks quite interesting let's just click OK and allow this to open up into Photoshop which you can see here is a fairly quick process remember though that the images I'm using are quite small and it would take maybe a few seconds longer if you were working on a high resolution image if you're familiar with Photoshop smart filters then I would suggest you make use of those but I want to keep things pretty simple here so what we have is our filtered image and our original sitting beneath and of course the value of that is we can choose to reduce the impact of the filter effect here I suppose the easiest way would probably be by dropping down the opacity so we get a little bit of the original and a little bit of the filter that we also get the opportunity to add a layer mask or use the eraser tool mask is probably the safer way select the mask select black from the bottom of the toolbox the color picker I will select a soft edge brush I've got a flow rate here of 40 odd percent it's a little bit heavy for what we would normally do but to help speed up the process I'll stay with it because what I could do if I just wanted to bring through some of the original car in strategic places I can just choose to do that using a layer mask and of course the beauty of a mask is if we overdo things or change our mind we can switch to white and we can put back the pixels because we're never actually removing any just masking them as you can see from the mask here spinning round of the screen I've opened up a new image let's go back into our filters back to Topaz Labs and Impression and we'll just give the software its few seconds to draw the thumbnails on the right hand side I'll stay with the impressionistic filters at the moment but you can see that the one that's been applied to this image isn't exactly unattractive is it it works pretty well with that type of subject but if I go to any one of these I don't have to live with what the software gives me so let's go down and select something that one looks quite attractive just as it is straight out of the box but let me try to find something else that one there is a little bit different but we've got this symbol that appears in the center of the thumbnail whenever we select one when we click that all of the options for that particular filter open up and there's a lot of them before we start looking at these if you want to go back to your thumbnails double click the little arrow at the top left and you're straight back but here we are down here let me just go back oh I picked the wrong one I think but never mind it doesn't matter really which one I pick the object of the exercise here is to show you that we've got the opportunity to change the brush type and you'll see it redrawn every time I select one we've got lots of opportunities to make changes down here but I'm gonna to have to leave that for you to experiment because I've not used these anywhere near enough to be able to determine exactly what all these things do I'm experimenting here much the same as you will we can just try one or two and see what the difference is some are or some make large changes and some make quite small changes but I'm sure after a little bit of use we'll soon get a little bit of experience build up to know which ones have the effect that we find attractive but of course once we've found something that we feel we like and there are others down here but I think I'll leave you to discover those yourself including the texture and the canvas that you're going to use once we've actually created those then with the little plus at the top of the screen here we can save our new effect and when I click to do that you can see we get a save new effect dialog open up now we can give our filter a name I'm gonna stay with the one that I started with which was an impasto but I'm just gonna call it BB1 BB being my initials that will instantly tell me this is something that I've created myself and I can put a tag 
in any of these but I think I'll place this in the impressionistic folder and click save the spinning round of the screen indicates that I've closed down my filters and I've come back into Photoshop could be some time later could even be with a different image what I'm going to do with my layer copy here is to go back to my filters Topaz Labs and Topaz Impression give them just a few seconds to draw down the right hand side it usually applies the last filter you was using but what I'm going to do here is go back to the impressionistic filters but then scroll down to the bottom and down there you can see the one that I created just a few moments ago probably not the best filter in the set but it demonstrates exactly what we can do and of course we still get the opportunity to go back and fine-tune that if we wish in addition we'll also find them in your own presets and when I do that there's one that I've made earlier so if I select that there's another of the options that I've chosen to adjust and save for my own use down at the bottom left of the screen what we can do here is almost the same as what I've been doing with my second layer I can reduce the strength or the impact of the filter that I've just selected and in some respects what I'm doing here is blending the filter effect with the original layer much the same as I can do in Photoshop but I prefer to do it there because I have more control at any time you feel the need you've got the opportunity to click the original button top right and once again to bring back the filter and via the little zoom option here you can see that we can adjust the size but personally I like to see my images fully on screen let me take you into one of the other options let's go into let's say the pencil option and I'll click the first preset you can see there not unattractive are they that one's a little bit bright but some of these I think look pretty good and certainly I can see opportunities to use these and down the bottom I saw some interesting ones with sketchwork 3 and soft sketch appeal to me quite a lot let me just click OK and we'll open that up into Photoshop because this may be one of those which would blend nicely with the original and again if I just keep it simple just for a moment there we've got just a simple blend of the two but I could combine that with a layer mask of course if I wanted to bring in a little more color in strategic places I've got those opportunities as you can see by the spinning round of the screen I've opened up another image all of these images are the same pixel value 1920 pixels by 1080 I've made my layer copy but what I have done here is to change this into a smart filter just to give you an idea of how that looks when we go to the filters topaz and impression and once again those few seconds but I'll change the option we'll look at something different to try to give you an idea of what some of the other options offer let's look at ancient which may work well with this church and starting at the top cave dweller 1 cave dweller 2 I think whatever we do with filters we must always remember that this is the starting point so sometimes even when we click on a filter and it doesn't look really wonderful straight out of the box if we apply a little imagination to it maybe we can see a route to where we can make it pretty good and even that one I don't find unattractive I'm sure I could do something with that so you can see all of the different options under the heading of ancient and I may as well go down full tilt right the way down to the bottom and again we've got those same opportunities to make any changes we wish in a vast number of ways and even save the result if we find something unique into our own set of presets of course if we do experiment with these sliders and I think it's not uncommon sometimes 
to experiment with a batch of sliders and then think, oh, I've gone a little too far, and that's certainly too far. How do I get back to the starting point? Up at the top right, you've got a little symbol, and if I hover over it, you can see what it says. Give it a click, and we're back to where we started. With the spinning round of the screen, I've made my picture a little bigger, and I've brought you down to the bottom part of the options, which controls texture. Because we control the strength, as you can see, the texture now is very easily visible on screen there. And of course, we get the opportunity to change the size. But we can also change the texture type by just clicking around these options. And there's a lot of those too. So as you can see, you've got many different options here to create something really unique for yourself. But if you are working on images for a slideshow, then you're going to want a similar filter effect for many different images. Well, then that's where the creation of a preset is really going to come into its own, I guess. Here I brought you into the charcoal and pastel options and you can see there's quite a few different ones here. This one I found quite appealing and I think that would work well bring in some of the original back through, particularly the priest and the colour around the light doorway that they're walking towards. Let's have a quick look elsewhere at something we've not seen. I don't think we've looked at the painting ones yet, although I think one of those was applied to the flower when it first opened up. Let's look at this one. You can see the watercolour effect. Some interesting effects and as you can see by scrolling down again, a large number of them. Now when we do apply the filter, and my reason for converting this particular layer into a smart filter, was to show you that we can go back into Topaz Impression simply by double clicking that word. That will take us back in and we can make a change of the filter effect that we've already applied. Just taking a few seconds to redraw that but I will select something different and OK that. So you can see that's quite a quick way of changing from one filter effect to another. Smart filters and of course we get the mask applied automatically for us. Now there's not a great deal more I can say about these filters. There's a large number of them within certain categories. Many of them are going to work pretty well straight out of the box, which is unusual for a filter effect. But we do have the options via Photoshop to apply layers, layer masks, smart filters. But here we just have a filter effect selected. And all I would need to do to apply that is to click OK. And there we have it. The rest is really down to experimentation and trying to create something unique to you.